Hi, this is our install of uh, Microsoft Windows 10, um, and I am doing it on a machine that does not have the standard Dell BIOS. So this is a Phoenix BIOS, you can see. I wanted to show this first because the first thing you need to do whenever you install something um, that's gonna overwrite the operating system is you need to go into BIOS and make sure you set the boot order so it'll work. So I've gone into this BIOS, I've tabbed down from main up here to boot, and then I've reset the boot order so that it goes CD-ROM first because I'm going to be installing that operating system from it. Then the network drive and then the hard drive. You don't have to have network drive in there at all. You could just do CD-ROM to hard drive. And then I have a couple options on how I save it. I can either go down here. It says F10 means save and exit or I can go to the exit screen and choose to save and exit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I guess I, this is a video, by the way, of me doing the install so I could talk through it while after I was done and fast forward because we don't listen to or watch the whole thing go across. So after I've set that up, oh, um, it says right here down at the bottom how to change the values is the plus and the minus key. You just hit those to move them up and down the list. And once you're done, you go to exit saving changes and it'll start to boot if you've got your... Windows CD in, it'll start to boot from Windows. It looks like you're booting Windows, but if you've got the CD in and set first, it's actually booting Windows from a Windows 10 installation CD for it. And by the way, during this install, if you need to pause, rewind, um, fast forward, that's fine. I'm going to be fast forwarding through this video because I don't think you need to um, watch blank screens going by. So if you're like, oh, that happened way faster on his computer, number one, it is possible because I might have a faster drive uh, than you're installing this on right now, or it might be that I just fast forwarded the video uh, real quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward it right now to the spot where it first comes up uh, asking us if we wanna do something. So once it comes up, the first thing it asks us is, is this kind of Windows that you want to install? Do you want to install in English? Are you from the United States? Keyboard US? Yep, if that's all true, you just hit the next key and move on to the next step, which is to click Install Now. This particular CD I'm using is an Enterprise CD. It has a bunch of different versions of Windows 10 on it. So I'm going to go down and choose Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Professional. There's really three versions that you might install at home, Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Professional and Windows 10 Ultimate. And uh, I would recommend Professional as the, the best one. Home works for most users, but it's got some things disabled on it. Uh, and really, they're all the same version. It's just some features are enabled and some are disabled based on what you paid for your version of Windows or what you downloaded uh, to get on Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, choose Windows 10 Professional which you can see this one was last modified April 2019. And then it's going to ask us if we agree to license terms. You just click accept the license uh, and hit next. And then it's going to ask us a question that doesn't or isn't really written well. Uh, the first option, the default option that we see that's squared up says upgrade. Now, if you were doing an upgrade from a Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1 or earlier version of Windows 10, um, and you want to keep all your files and all your programs, that's the one to choose. Now, the downside of this doesn't wipe your whole drive. If you have a virus, you could still have a virus. Um, it's not completely clean. But if we want to keep all of our stuff, it's the one to choose. The one below it says custom install Windows only. It shouldn't say custom. It should say um, erase or new file or whatever. That means you're going to wipe whatever's there, start all over. All your applications, all your files uh, will be gone. Uh, but it's the cleanest one. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to choose that uh, version, the custom install. Um, also, you can't do an upgrade on a disk that's empty. This one is empty. This is where it says, hey, where do you want to install Windows? Now, see it says drive zero. There's only one drive. And if it showed multiple things and they all said drive zero, it would still only be one drive. The drive number is the, the base number uh, on the 
sequence of drives that are in a computer. In a laptop, there's traditionally only one. There's some with two, but most of them only have one. Right now, we're going to choose to just say next. But if there was a bunch of things listed there, you could go and delete all those, reformat the drive, and then say next. That would clean everything off of it. And if you're using an old drive of ours, that's what you should do is delete those other things, then say next, and it'll start uh, clean. Now, we're not going to sit here and watch it install. And then percentages are always misleading on Windows, or at least to my experience. Uh, you can see it goes one, two, and you would think it would get to 100 before it gets to the next step. It actually gets to 48. I'm going to fast forward it to that point. Okay, so once we hit 48%, it's going to say it's got enough ready that it's going to restart the computer and go to the next step of the installation. So that's why I'm saying you can't just walk away and think, ah, when it gets to, I'll wait, I'll come back when it's at 100 because, yeah, I don't know why. It should have gone to 100 and then gone to the next step. I guess that's 48% uh, of getting ready. Um, I don't know. I don't know why Windows or Microsoft chose that. So now that we're at that spot, it reboots itself and it comes back up with our next set of questions. Hey, is this right? Are you in the United States? Yes, hit next. Uh, is it your keyboard a US keyboard? Uh, there's other options, but you want to say yes. Is there another keyboard? No, 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 hit skip. Now it's going and installing some stuff again. And as it's doing this, if you remember our conversation on drivers, this is when it's looking for all the stuff on your computer and adding the drivers for it to make those hardware components work. And now it's just going to give us some, hey, this is new from Windows stuff. We don't really need to see or read all this. We could. Okay, so what kind of setup are you going to do? I, I, I try to stop there. Okay, so there's two options. Either it's a personal computer or it's a business computer. I realize, or organization computer. I realize the one you're doing it on if it's one of our school laptops. We should say organization. We're not. We're setting it up like you would set it up at home. So choose setup. Uh, for personal use here and say next. Okay, so Microsoft wants to make us make accounts. So we're not going to create an account. We're just going to click offline account. And we're going to go through and we're just going to um, go ahead and say limited experience. If you say get it now, it's going to try to make you get an account, which is not what we wanted, right? So click offline account, say limited experience, limited doesn't mean you get anything less. It just means it's not going to be account set up to anything. Whatever name you want to put in, your name, obviously, um, for who's going to use it. You don't have to set up a password. You can if you want to. Uh, and then just say, I, these are the things. I say no uh, because I don't want this to be connected to my Microsoft account. I, I can go ahead and take the digital assistance. And I'm going to turn off some privacy things so that Microsoft doesn't know everything about what I do. You can just say accept because you're only going to use this for a few days, if that. Um, but if you're doing this at home to reinstall Windows on a machine at home, then you may want to turn off some of these Microsoft tracking things so they don't know everything you're doing on your computer all the time. Once you hit next, it's basically going into Windows. It's finishing the setup creating all the profile things that are set up in your profile when you first come in, making all those folders, and also finishing the installation of any drivers that it needs to install on your computer. Now, the Windows DVD is very large, it's uh, five gig. In fact, I've had problems in the past even fitting it on a DVD anymore because it's gotten so large. And one of the reasons it's gotten so large is because um, it's added more and more and more drivers to that disk so that it can find them and make your stuff work. Back when Windows Vista came out, um, which also would upgrade, um, they had lots and lots of driver problems and that's why Windows Vista hit so many roadblocks of people hating it. They hated it because things that worked yesterday, they'd upgrade to Vista and then all of a sudden they wouldn't work today because they didn't have the driver files created for all the devices out there yet. Not every device has a device driver in the Windows or on the Windows DVD. Most, and I'm gonna say 85%, there's a guess from me, do. 
Okay, we're up to Windows. That was it for the Windows 10 install. Um, if you want to go and play with it now, you'll see that Windows just gives us this graphical user interface, this GUI. Um, it allows us to interact and install other things, but it on its own doesn't install much. It installs some other stuff, but not much other stuff. It's really about um, the the operating system and access to your hardware more than it is about applications. Microsoft sells all those applications, so they don't want to give them all to you for free. The next operating system we're going to look at uh, is a Linux operating system, which is open source or free, and it does give you most of the applications with it, and it, those that don't come with it, you can download for free as well. Um, there are paid applications for them, but most Microsoft applications are paid, uh, even if it's just a little bit, and so that's how they make their money, right? They want you to go and and buy their their other programs. So you're going to pay $100 to get your computer working, to get a GUI, an operating system on it, and then you're going to pay more for all the things that you want to use on it, like Microsoft Office. Okay, so that's it for the Windows 10 install. Um, I want everyone to install it, whether you're doing it at home on one of our laptops or you're doing it at school on one of our laptops, it doesn't matter. You should have the experience of installing an operating system, this operating system, at least once.